In this video, they want us to use the node voltage method to calculate the current I-O, which is the current flowing through this 2K resistor here. Now, let's look at something really quickly, right? This is our first problem in node voltage that we're actually going to introduce a dependent source. But do not worry, do not worry. We should remember exactly how to handle dependent sources when we have them in our circuit, right? The first thing is to identify what type of dependent source is it. Now, in this particular situation, we have a voltage source, right? And it's going to be depending on a voltage. So this is a voltage dependent voltage source. Now, the voltage it's going to be dependent on is going to be Vx, which is going to be the voltage across this 1K resistor. So once we know the value of the voltage across this 1K resistor, we should know the value of this voltage source. Okay, now let's begin, right? We're going to be using node voltage analysis. So we know the first thing we're going to do is to identify the essential nodes. We have two essential nodes in all, which is going to be the node up here. I'm going to call this node 1. And because we want the node voltage, the voltage at that node, I'm just going to write it as V1. And we have another node down here, and I'm just going to take this node as our reference node. Right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to write a node voltage equation at node 1. Okay, now remember, we're always going to assume the current is leaving this node. So we're going to draw an arrow to go this way, this way, and that way. Now this might not be correct, but we always assume that the current is leaving the node when we write our node voltage equations. So for the current going in this branch here, we're going to have V1 minus 12 divided by 1000. So for the node voltage at node 1, we know the current in this branch is going to be V1 minus 12 over the resistance, which is 1K, 1000. Plus, the current in this direction is going to be V1 over 2000. Plus, we're going to have the voltage flowing through this branch here. And we have a voltage source. We have a voltage source, even though it's a voltage-dependent voltage source. So we're still going to treat it as a voltage source. So we have V1 minus... 2Vx over 1000 and all of that equals 0. Okay, let's simplify this. We know 2000 is the LCD, so we're going to multiply each term by 2000. That's going to give us 2V1 minus 24 plus V1 plus 2V1 minus 4Vx and all of that equals 0. When we simplify this, we're going to get 5V1 minus 4VX equals positive 24. I'm going to call this equation 1, right? But because we have this dependent source here, we must write a constraint equation. Now, for the VX, right, we know VX is going to be the voltage across this 1K resistor. So when you think about this now, you can add in a current to flow to that resistor, and you can say Vx equals 1,000 times that current. Now, of course, that's one way you can go about it, but that's just going to add another unknown variable, right? We don't want to do that. If we can avoid that, that's what we're going to do, right? For the voltage Vx, which is the voltage across that 1K resistor, look what's happening, right? We have a voltage source, and we have a node node 1, right? So this resistor is between a voltage source and node 1. If we look at the polarity of that voltage source, the positive terminal of the voltage source is connected to the 1K resistor. And we can also say that the voltage source has a higher potential than the voltage at node 1 because we know some of that voltage is going to go towards that 1K resistor. Therefore, to find the voltage Vx, which is the voltage across the 1K resistor, we can just subtract the voltage at node 1 from the voltage source. So when we write this down, we can say 12 volts, which is the source voltage, minus the voltage at node 1, 
and that's going to give you the voltage Vx, which is the voltage across that 1K resistor. We're going to have 12 minus, we're going to have V1, right? So we have 12 minus V1. equals the voltage Vx. So this equals Vx. Now we can simplify this to be Vx plus V1 equals 12. So this is going to be equation 2. Vx plus V1 equals 12. Now because we have these two equations and these two unknowns, we can just do the matrix method to solve for the unknowns. So we're going to have a 2 by 2 matrix. The unknowns is going to be V1 and Vx, and that's going to equal, for the first equation we have 24, for V1 we had positive 5 and negative 4, so positive 5, negative 4. For V1, for the second equation we have positive 1 and positive 1, so we don't really have to rewrite this, but just know V1 is going to come first, so we have positive 1 positive 1 and that equals 12. Now just using your calculator, we're going to take the inverse of A multiplied by B. When you do that, V1 equals 8 volts for V1, right? And for V2, we got 4 volts. Okay, so now the question wanted us to find the current IO, which is the current flowing through this resistor right here. We know the voltage at node 1, that's going to be 8 volts. So to find the current IO, we can actually just use Ohm's law, right? We can just use Ohm's law to find the current IO. So when we do that, we're going to have IO equals V1 over R. We know V1 is going to be 8 volts. So we have IO equals 8 divided by the resistance, which is going to be a 2K resistor. So we have divided by 2000. Therefore, the current IO equals 4 milliamps. So this is going to be our answer for this problem. The current IO equals 4 milliamps. So the current flowing through this 2K resistor is going to be 4 milliamps.